Hi friends, we, as you know, are living in some exciting days, and I just got through watching a video put out by our brother Stephen Vandenoon, and he was telling about an article that was in the publication I got it right here of the breaking is Israel news and it's an article on coexist and I you know I had another sister uh, give me a heads up on this but what the title says Muslim Christian Jewish leaders plan an interfaith worship center in Jerusalem from September the 5th through the 11th they will be using a Jerusalem structure known as the Alpert Youth Music Center and they're going to name it for those seven days Amen and it will be a place of worship for the three Abrahamic faiths sharing a passion for Jerusalem in which they coexist temporarily under the wings of the Almighty. Now, you know, I'll tell you, I had just made a video <clears throat> just a few days ago where I said that I really believed that on the Temple Mount, we would see the Dome of the Rock, the Temple, and in between the two, a church. And, and I had mentioned, you know, how the Jews believe in Abraham, and they're look, looking, or they believe in the God of Abraham, Jehovah and that they were looking for their Messiah. The Christians surely believe in the God of Abraham, and we accept Jesus Christ as our Messiah. And the Muslims believe in the God of Abraham. They say they do, but they surely do not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But anyway... Here is an article just a few days ago released today on July the 1st about the three Abrahamic faiths uniting together. Now, friend, that is nothing less than something that's been inspired by the Pope to bring all religions to worship together as one. And the only way there will ever be a one world government is to have a one world uh, faith, one world belief system. And that is exactly what they're trying to do. Now, I want to quickly um, discuss two men who lived years ago, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, and also I want to discuss Rabbi Judah Ben Samuel quickly to bring us, uh, or to bring back to our remembrance uh, prophecies of old, which are now being fulfilled. I mean, we, <laughs> friend, we are there. I mean, we are there. You know, the city of Damascus had been inhabited for over 4,000 years. And the word of God plainly said that it would be left as a heap of ruins. And, you know, for years we thought, how this ain't going to never happen. You know, we, we thought, you know, that they would be bombed or whatever. But, you know, from an outside um, country, 
but this is happening within and God's word of course is being fulfilled and now we're going to shed light on another scripture that we are about to witness being fulfilled and that is the building of the third temple now real quickly um, the rabbi Judah ben Samuel who lived in uh, you know many hundreds of years ago and passed away in February of the year 1217 and he gave a prophecy about the last 10 jubilees which would be you know we, we have we're going to have a total of 120 jubilees and we are in the 120th one now so this is the prophecy was these last 10 jubilees well he stated that the ottoman turks would rule over jerusalem for eight jubilees then jerusalem would be a no man's land for one jubilee and then in the final jubilee the final 50 years it would come back into the possession that is Jerusalem would come back into the possession of the Jewish people signifying the beginning of the Messianic kingdom okay now in or should I say from August the 24th of 1516 to January the 24th of the year 1517 is when the Ottoman Turks took over Jerusalem and they did in fact control Jerusalem for those eight jubilees or the five excuse me the 400 years and they left Jerusalem in December of the year 1917 okay now from 1917 to 1967 uh, Jerusalem was called no man's land and you can look that up i mean that's in the history books but of course we had the six-day war in 1967 which is when uh the jewish people uh defeated those armies that came against them and they uh brought back the east jerusalem and the Temple Mount and then that's when all of the problems really began even to this day they're trying to get Israel to go back to the pre 1967 borders and uh, they're saying no we're not going to do that but anyway so we are in the final final 50 years and that jubilee that will end Rabbi Judah Ben Samuel's prophecy will be from August the 24th of 2016 to January the 24th of 2017. Now what is interesting in that time frame because back 500 years ago it was between August the 24th of 1516 and January the 24th of 1517 that the Ottomans Turks took over and controlled 
and began to control Jerusalem, it went into captivity to them. Now, 500 years later, let's look at what's going on in this little short window from August the 24th to January the 24th. Well, with, between these few months, that's August to September to October to November to December to January. So in this five-month span, we're going to have, in September, we're going to have this coexist uh, thing happening over there in Jerusalem. And then in November, we're going to have the elections for a new president. And then in January, I think the 20th or 21st, the new president is supposed to be sworn in. All of these things is going to happen. I mean, life-changing events for nations. And I believe another thing we're going to see is this. Between August of this year and January, I believe we will see the beginning of the building of the third temple. Now, the reason why I say that is this. Like I mentioned in my videos, two Jubilees ago, in 1917, when General Allenby marched in to Jerusalem, Actually, I mean, he dismounted the horse, his horses, and they walked in. He did that out of respect to Jesus Christ. Um, but anyway, um, in 1917, Israel was delivered, Jerusalem was delivered from the Ottoman Turks. Israel got back their land, and they began coming home. They began coming home. In 1967, Israel regained the Temple Mount and East Jerusalem to where they can unify Jerusalem. That was in 1967, so remember that year, because I got something else to add to it. Now, 50 years later, the only thing they don't have is their temple. So, in 1917, they got their land. 1967, they got their city. And I believe by 2017, they will have their temple. Or at least it will be in the process of being rebuilt. Now, I heard one person say one time that God is reversing, restoring to them in reverse order of what they lost. And, you know, uh, back during the days of Christ, they lost their temple in 70 AD. Okay. Then they lost their city. And then they actually just totally got expelled from the Middle East. And that's when they became known as the wandering Jew. Uh, they, can, they, they were no longer allowed to be there. And while they were gone, the land laid waste and barren. I <laughs> praise God. I mean, it, it was not going to produce for anyone. That land was given to them by God. And the only way that land was ever going to quit being barren and laid waste is when God's people came home. And friend, when God's people came home, the land began to sp sprout and grow. And praise God, in the land of Israel, they send out more produce and flowers and Oh my goodness, 
if God is just blessing his people uh, and, and his people are blessing the rest of the world with the things that is produced in, in Jerusalem and in, in Israel and the technology that's coming out of there is just unbelievable. Now, so that's what we got to look forward to. And we're already in July the 1st. So we've only got uh, a month or two. And we're going to see a lot of things taking place. Not to mention, you know, also uh, October the 2nd through the 4th is Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of Trumpets. So if there was ever a prime time, you would think, for the rapture to happen on the Feast of Trumpets, here in this final 120th Jubilee, the year that ends Rabbi Judah ben Samuel's prophecy, which stated that in the 10th and final Jubilee would begin the Messianic end times. Well, praise God, the Messiah can come, the trumpet can sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then he will again put his attention to those seven final years to the Jewish people, and that truly would be the Messianic end times. So I encourage you to look up Rabbi Judah ben Samuel's prophecy and study it. It is very profound, and he's right on the point. Boom, boom, boom. And that's the reason why I am fully expecting um, the temple to be uh, to begin. And on top of that, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Brother... Uh, goodness, um, Brother Danoon, Stephen Ben Danoon. I got uh, Judah Ben Samuel, and I almost called him Judah Ben Samuel. No, Rabbi, uh, um, listen to me, Rabbi. Um, our brother Stephen Ben Danoon, uh, in his latest video, he made a point. There's things going on that he can't tell us. But he said, friends, the building of the third temple is at the door. At the door. So see, he lives over there. So he he has people telling him things that said, hey, you know, keep this, you know, keep this uh, under wraps and, until we can announce it and make it public. So he's just letting us know, hey, uh, it's time to, you know, wake up, smell the coffee because... Um, uh, things is happening now so look that up and quickly what I want to discuss about uh, Sir Isaac Newton is this um, the decree of Jerusalem that um, had been brought out uh, by uh, a young lady and um, the decree that I had read to y'all the, the, on the previous video had talked about that uh, Menachem Begin had sent um, the president, uh, Jimmy Carter, um, a letter stating that the Knesset made a decree in July of 1967 that Jerusalem is one city indivisible and is the capital of the state of Israel now with that thought in mind let's read Daniel chapter 20 uh, verse 25 uh, chapter 9 verse 25 he said Know and understand this. From the issuing of the decree to re get that from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. See, Jerusalem was restored 
1967. And the decree by the Knesset said that this city is one city, cannot be divided, and is the capital of Israel. That decree was in July. Um, of 1967. He says, know and understand this from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be rebuilt with a plaza and a moat, but in difficult times. Now, he separated it in seven weeks and also in 62 weeks. And Sir Isaac Newton did so much studying on the numerology and a lot of stuff about God's word. And it was his belief that God did nothing just by chance. That everything he said and did was for a specific purpose. And he felt that God could have said, you know, from the restoring of Jerusalem to Messiah, the prince would be 69 weeks. But... He didn't say that. He said it would be seven weeks and 62 weeks. So now, look up the prophecy of Daniel 70, 70 weeks by Sir Isaac Newton. And he will help, or it will help explain what his take was on those seven weeks. And pretty much, he felt that it had a dual prophecy. The seven weeks and the 62 weeks combined was for the time when he came first as a, a child. He came to take away our sins. But he also felt that the seven weeks was for a future time when Israel would be restored as promised in God's word and that when it was restored that in seven weeks after that then Jesus would return. Now, of course, seven weeks is seven weeks of years and seven times seven is 49 are 49 years and when you add 49 years to 1967 friend you come up to 2016 so if the decree went forth in July of 1967 go forward 49 years and you come up to the year 2016, possibly in July or August or September or October, but that's the reason why there's such an excitement about this uh, letter that has, or this information that has came out, and, uh, you know, I did a Google search just on that, and I found several books uh, where this uh, information from Menachem Begin was written to Jimmy Carter, you know, the Camp David Accords and, and all of that back there in the early 70s and so forth. It's on the internet. If you want to look it up, I tell you, it's, it's, it, it, it's for real. I mean, this really happened. Uh, I mean, uh, Menachem Begin, and actually, uh, it, it's... That information is one of the last correspondence that he sent to our president, Jimmy Carter. But anyway, um, the bottom line is this. I just wanted to bring your attention um, 
to these facts that we are entering. I mean, I, th I think we all know this, but I, I, I want you to know that we are entering a time, a window of where to fulfill the prophecy that was given to Rabbi Judah ben Samuel, who stated that the prophecy was given to him by Elijah. And that Elijah told him these things. And I know that seems far-fetched, but you got to remember back in the year 1217, um, I think that's back during the Dark Ages. Um, and if God wanted this man to know something, uh, he did it. it because I'm, I'm going to tell you, everything that, that Rabbi Judah ben Samuel has prophesied, which began in the year 15. Uh, 16 to 1517, it has been right on point. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, right on target. And another thing that Elijah shared with uh, Rabbi Judah ben Samuel, it, he told him that the prerequisite of answered prayers was two things. That when you come to God, you come with the excitement of his greatness and an, and an understanding of God's holiness. Now, I thought that was eye-opening. That when we pray to our Father, we understand and, and, and we respect that our Father is holy and we come to him with that understanding that our heavenly father is holy you know no wonder he instructs us to be still and know that I am God you know our, our father is holy and also Coupled with that, when we come to our Holy Father, we come with the excitement. <laughs> Praise God. We come with the excitement that our God is great. He's great and he's holy. Friend, when you understand that our God is great and our God is holy, you talking about two things that should just make your faith explode? Because the word of God says, he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Friend, praise God. We will very soon won't be sitting here watching videos. We won't be here making videos. We are going to be in the presence of our holy, mighty God. And we're going to get to meet each other. You know, y'all got to come to me. Just say, hey, I'm sister so-and-so, and I'm brother so-and-so, you know. Um, I'm brother Brian, and I'm brother Thomas, and I'm brother Nigel, and I'm, you know, I'm sister Rosemary, and, you know, you know, I'm sister Andy T. And, and just, I mean, that, there's just so many of y'all that I just think the world of. And, you know, I, I tell you... <laughs> I could just sit here and name off about 20 or 30 of you that um, I just love hearing from. And um, we're soon going to get to meet each other. And friend, think of this. That word goodbye 
will never be spoken in heaven. There is no goodbyes. You might get to say, I'll see you later, but there will be no goodbyes. No. That, mm -mm. No goodbyes. That, that, that's, that will be a thing of the past. Praise God. Praise God. Um, anyway, I, I just I just had to to share this with you. Um, it's late, and I, I just I just had to, to get this out there for y'all. And um, I just want you to know that be on the lookout. Like I said, subscribe to Brother um, Stephen Ben Denu. Hey, if you're not a subscriber to me. If you don't mind clicking that subscribe button, hey, I'd, I'd love to have you. Um, but if not, that's fine. Um, you know, it's not about subscriptions, uh, but it is about giving Jesus Christ all the praise and all the glory because it's not about me. It's not about anyone else. It's all about him. I mean, he even controls. No, that ain't the right way to say it. The air that we breathe is a gift that he gives us. And um, I think a lot of times we take our life for granted, not realizing that every breath we breathe is a gift of life that has come from our Father. So, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. You have breath? Christ gave it to you. And with your breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And remember, our God is holy, our God is great. And our God is love. My friend, you have a blessed day. And God bless you. And I'll talk to you later.